kiến thức không định thần có lợi ích So, uh, good evening, sir, and good evening, friends. Uh, today, uh, we uh, we have C A Hariharan sir over here, who is going to take a uh, costing classes for you. So, sir, uh, shall we begin, sir? Yeah. Yes. Sir. Yes. Sir. It is all yours. So, uh, good evening, sir, and good evening, friends. Uh, today, uh, we uh, we have C A Hariharan sir over here, who is going to take uh, costing classes for you. So, sir, uh, shall we begin, sir? Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is all yours. Good evening, all of you. Never come on a come. Hope my voice is audible, am I right? Hello, yes. <clears throat> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, welcome to Costing Marathon session. This is C.A.K. Hariran, faculty member of SIRC from Chennai. Yeah. Thank you, all of you. Thank you, my guests. Welcome. Yeah, good evening, all of you. Thank you so much, my guests. It's a three days marathon program. Today, day one, we are going to discuss about all post exam theory questions. Since this attempt is the last attempt, this attempt is the last attempt not for the purpose of institute, but for you, it's a last attempt, am I right? So how we have to convert this attempt to last attempt? That is what the object began the program. That's why I say is inviting all the eminent faculty to help in different manner. So kindly make a note of it, all the important theory questions. The reason began conducting the first program as an important theory question is, you know the weightage of the theory, Theory plays a vital role in CA examination, especially in costing paper. The main problem for reason for failure in this costing paper in CA examination is in intermediate. Most of the student thinks costing paper is a <clears throat> practical paper. But unfortunately, costing paper, neither practical paper nor theoretical paper, it's a concept-based paper. All the concepts are there in the theory part. First, you should learn the theory. Thereafter, you have to move to problem. Concept with the problem only, you can understand the question itself. Because in main in examination, the main problem for the CA student is what is the problem in the problem in the main's problem? Question in any puri If you want to understand the question, if you want to write the correct answer, first concept really should be strong. And all the concepts are there, the theory. With respect to theory, weightage for the theory, you know, 20 mark is awarded for the theory. 20 mark is the direct theory and the five mark for concept-based theory. So if you're strong in theory, 25 mark is assured. And 25 mark is not a small quantum. To clear the examination, you need 50 marks, average 50 marks. Out of which 50% of the mark lies in the theory part. So how to have the grip over that theory? Now we are going to discuss about all post-exam theories. Today theory, tomorrow, the day after tomorrow, all post exam questions, practical questions and answers we are going to discuss. Understood all of you? Shall we start? <clears throat> now, apparently kindly make a note also. Today, program four o'clock to six o'clock. I am having other urgent work at after six o'clock. So pardon me. Tomorrow and the day after tomorrow, I will extend half an hour, half an hour so that I can offset your number of hours. Hope you can understand. Now, We'll go with the post exam theory part. <clears throat> Screen is visible. 
Can you check it up? Screen is visible. Yeah, my dear students, screen is visible. Can Even for me, also not visible. That's why I'm saying. I'll try it again. Now, can you check it up? It's visible for me now. No. Ashwin Krishna. So, John, can you check it up? Now it's visible. Three pages selling, yes. Oh. Ah, thank you, thank you. So now it's visible. The first question Objectives of Financial management. Six objectives of financial management. The question I have coined by way of the remembrance techniques with the numbers. In general, with respect to theory, not only in costing any paper for that matter, each point carries half a mark. Unless a very specific number of points are there in the question, better you can be the question to write what half mark for the each point. So whether want or don't want, mere understanding alone is not sufficient. He have to remember number of points also. Then only can score the mark. That's the reason all the questions I have coined with the numbers. So that easy for you to recollect four points, five points, six points. Without losing the mark, you can be the question to score. The first one is what? Object is soft costing. In examination, they lost object is soft costing. But I have coined for your better understanding, six object is soft costing. What all the six objects are there? Why we need a costing is called object is of costing. That is called six objects. Without knowing costing, we may not the person know how much the cost incurred to produce the product. So first one is ascertainment of cost. Without knowing cost, we can't the person to fix the selling price also. Therefore, the second object is one determination of selling price. The difference between cost and the selling price is called the profit. So that is for the purpose of ascertainment of profit. Then without doing cost, we can't the portion to reduce the cost or control the cost. So the next object is cost reduction and the cost control. And last one is for decision making purpose. These are all six objectives of costing, ascertainment of cost, determination of selling price, ascertainment of profit, cost control, cost reduction and decision making purpose. Ascertainment of cost, okay. Determination of selling price, okay. Ascertainment of what profit also, okay. Then everything for the purpose of decision making only. But, but, but the two more things are there. What are all the in, in between? Yes. Cost reduction and cost control. Okay. Cost reduction and cost control. In that, the next important question is different between cost reduction and cost control, frequently asked to five mark question. What do you mean by cost reduction and what do you mean by cost control? Cost reduction represents real and permanent reduction, real and permanent reduction in cost per unit of the product that to without tampering the quality of the product is called cost reduction. Real and permanent reduction without affecting the quality of the product is called a cost reduction. Cost control represents one temporary reduction in overall cost of the product. Temporary reduction in overall cost of the product. Here, quality of the product may going to get affected. Quality of the product will get affected. Then, with respect to cost reduction, it's a dynamic in nature, whereas cost control may not be dynamic, lack of dynamism. 
cost reduction is a continuous process. Therefore, there is no visible end for the cost reduction. Whereas with respect to cost control, once the object has matured, it's a full stop. There is no further. Therefore, visible end will be there for cost control. There is no visible end for cost reduction. So cost reduction, cost control also frequently asked a question. The next important. Threefold assumption in cost reduction. The definition itself assumption. What is the definition for cost reduction? Real and the permanent savings in cost per unit of the product without affecting the quality of the product is called the cost reduction. Therefore, the, this has been split into three parts. Permanent saving, savings in cost per unit without affecting the quality. These are all the three elements with respect to one cost reduction. Then three items for the cost center. Now we are moving to cost center. Two things are the cost center and the cost unit. Cost center represents one. It's a location, person, item of equipment, combination of all for the purpose of ascertainment of cost and for the purpose of controlling the cost is called cost center. So for the purpose of ascertainment of cost and for the purpose of controlling the cost. For the three elements are the, what are the location, person, item of equipment. With respect to cost center, classification of cost center, three different bases are there for classification. One is based on manufacturing industry, based on non-manufacturing industry, and based on input-output relationship. These are all the three elements, three bases. Based on manufacturing industries, it can be classified into production cost center, and service cost center. Based on non-manufacturing industry, is a personal cost center and impersonal cost center. Personal and impersonal cost center. And based on input-output relationship, based on input-output relationship, it can be classified into two types. What are the standard cost center and discretionary cost center. Now, standard and discretionary cost center. If input output relationship, the screen is visible now. Screen is not visible. Check it up. Ashwin is selling, screen is not visible. Not visible. Visible. Okay, okay. Thank you. Yeah. With respect to standard and discretionary cost center, standard cost center represents what? If there is an input output relationship is there, then it is called a standard cost center. If there is no one to one relationship between input and output, what purpose we incur the cost, how much output has come, the relationship is not there means, then it is called one discretionary cost center. Or easy way to understand. Advertisement department, advertisement, if I'm going to do the advertisement, is it possible for us to say how much I spend advertisement and how much we are getting the sales or what improvement? Is it possible? Not possible. Yes, come on. Yes, it's not possible. Why? Because it's a discretionary in nature. If you want, you can do the advertisement. Otherwise, you know it. One to one relationship may not possible with respect to what? in case of discretionary cost center. Standard cost center means it's possible. So three different types of cost centers are there. One is based on manufacturing industry. Manufacturing industry is very easy for you. Why production department, service department, therefore production cost center, service cost center. <coughs> Non-manufacturing industry, three, two things are there, okay? Non-manufacturing industry, two things are there. What are they? Product for personal cost center, impersonal cost center. And last one is what? Standard and discretionary cost center. Okay, next. Limitations of cost accounting. You know, previous to previous exam, this question has been possible. Limitations of cost accounting. With respect to cost accounting, installation of cost accounting, three limitations are there. One is expensive. Already we are preparing finance, okay, accounts. 
debit to credit trading p and l account clear <clears throat> now again what are, if you're going to prepare cost accounting records it's obviously expensive reconciliation is what we have to do why we have to do the reconciliation the reason in case of financial account we may going to get x amount of profit and the cost accounting department may going to go y amount of profit then there will be the difference between financial accounting and the cost accounting profit if there is a difference then it's our duty to explain what could be the reason for difference in profit between cost accounting and the financial accounting therefore we need one proper explanation that is called reconciliation then duplication of work what is called duplication of work with respect to duplication of work purchase of raw material we have to pass the entry in financial accounting as well as cost accounting sales entry will be passed in financial accounting as well as cost accounting so in this juncture duplication of work is there no for same transaction we are going to pass the entry in cost accounting as well as financial accounting therefore duplication of work also there with respect to cost accounting therefore three major limitations are there in cost accounting one is expense another one is reconciliation is we have to do and third one is what duplication of work next hope you are taking parallel notes am i right or at least you can take the screenshot then next one is what three items for the cost unit cost unit consist of product unit of product or service or time or combination of all for the purpose of expression of cost and for the purpose of controlling the cost so these are all one three things what are all the unit of product or service or time or combination of all for the purpose of expression of cost and for the purpose of controlling the cost dear students it's a commonly committed mistake with respect to cost center and cost unit cost center also we come across three elements what are all the cost center represent location person item of equipment cost unit represent what unit of product or service or time to have the grip over because in examination they will interchange cost center represent location service time or cost unit represent unit of product or service or location clear all those things they will mix now so cost center is different cost unit is different you should not the portion to what interchange if you have the grip if you have the concept conceptual clarity you won't commit the mistake that's why after writing the examination shouldn't you send the message yeah, send the message sir one month before the examination i have referred foreign authors book one week before the examination i referred local authors book indian authors book day before the examination i referred your book sir in examination i have become author this is what student used to do am i right you will become author you will create your own points so it's not interchange the point you have to refer the icai material what all the points are they have to be clear you have to be what refer properly so cost center what is called cost center where i am going to incur the cost is called cost center what is called cost unit how i am going to recover the cost is called cost unit enga selavu pandrenu adu cost center போட்ட செலவு எப்படி பணம் எடுக்கிறேனோ அது காஸ்ட் யூனிட் கண்ணா வேர் யூ ஆர் டேக்கிங் கோச்சிங் இஸ் கால்டு கோச்சிங் சென்டர்னு சேம் மேனர் வேர் யூ ஆர் கோயிங் டு இன்கர் தி காஸ்ட் இஸ் கால்டு காஸ்ட் சென்டர் सपोज ஹரிஹரன் அண்ட் அசோசியேட் இன் ஆடிட் ஃபார்ம் ஐ அம் இன்கரிங் தி காஸ்ட் மை ஆடிட் ஃபார்ம் இஸ் தி காஸ்ட் சென்டர் बिकॉज ஐ அம் இன்கரிங் தி காஸ்ட் டு டு தி பிசினஸ் ஐ नीड மிஷனரி தென் எக்யூப்மென்ட் இஸ் தி காஸ்ட் சென்டர் தென் ஐ ஹேவ் டு அப்பாயிண்ட் சம் पर्सन पर्सन டு பீ இன் சார்ஜ் டு டேக் கேர் ஆஃப் தி ஆக்டிவிட்டி தென் पर्सन இஸ் தி காஸ்ட் சென்டர் so cost center consists of what one place irukonu i need one place i need some missionary i need a person in charge in general combination of all therefore cost center is a location person item of equipment is only one okay why i invested the money i want to recover the cost clear so if i want to get back the money that i have invested how i am going to get back the money i have invested i invested the money in the factory factory is a cost center then out of factory i am going to produce a product called pen by way of selling the pen i am going to recover the money then the product is a cost unit for me hariran associates in audit firm i am incurring the cost my audit firm is a cost center 
by way of by way of rendering services i am recovering the money therefore service is a cost unit for me i am incurring the cost in the browsing center browsing center is a cost center for me by way of how many hours you spend i am going to recover the time is a cost unit for me now got the idea or not where i am going to incur the cost is called the cost center how i am going to recover the cost is called the cost unit are you clear ellarkum puriyudha understood manasulayo samjhe chat liya respond mallana me konjam okay yeah good come the next one factors for installing cost accounting system factors for installing cost accounting system why we need a cost accounting before that if you want to install what all the factors you have to consider eight factors are that for the purpose of installing the cost accounting good 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 yes <clears throat> arjun shrinidhi yes sundaran hero ha ba yaar padam satya yes all are actively participate good ammu ammu sandhya saundarya good hero jamming what's your name first akshaya good kana yes thank you for your active participation keep it up nivi good kana keep it up priya good now what are all the factors you have to consider with respect to installing cost accounting system first one is what object of the system why we need a cost accounting the object should be clear scope and extent of coverage general organization setup technical aspects of the concern attitude and behavior of the people manner in which different variable expenses affect the operation the manner in which cost and financial account could be interlocked availability of sufficient information these are all the eight factor eight point you supposed to write with respect to one yeah installing the cost accounting system okay sudesh sudesh good keep it up now yes sapna welcome sapna then all the eight points you have to write then only get the four mark okay next five practical difficulties in installing cost accounting system okay so i am ready to install the cost accounting system you want to be expensive i want to have the better control over the cost but at the same time what are all the practical difficulties if i am going to install if something change some any changes has happened immediately the comfortness will get affected immediately resistance will come in the sense of what if i am going to install the same then people may not going to accept lack of support from top management top management may not going to agree no no i am comfortable with respect to the traditional processing system or traditional system then lack of support from accounting staff no 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 we are comfortable with respect to financial account only why we want to install another thing sir even if i'm going to convince the accounts people lack of support from operating level staff so all the places some changes happen immediately noise will come so these are all what difficulties three people may going to want to say no for installation one is support may not be we get from top management or accounting staff or operating level staff then even if i'm going to get the support we have to do the training trained person may not be there and the cost of operating system to install the same you have to incur the cost the for cost also you have to consider these are all the factors which affect with respect to installing the cost accounting system nothing but five practical difficulties while installing cost accounting system then responsibility center it's a frequently asked next question responsibility center what is called responsibility center it's an active activity center of a business organization entrusted with special task activity center of a business organization entrusted with a special task is called responsibility center the responsibility center consists of three different thing one is cost center profit center investment center and revenue center these are the four categories of responsibility center so you have to write the definition also first what is called responsibility center active center of a business organization 
entrusted with a special task is called responsibility center. It may consist of cost center, profit center, inventory, in investment center, and revenue center. Now, suppose you are doing the factory audit. If you go for the factory, then our object is what? Minimization of cost. From where we can be the portion to buy the raw material. We don't to go for substitutional supplier so that we can minimize the cost. Then why don't you apply JAT, just in time purchase? How to minimize wastage, scrap? Our object has to minimization of cost. Therefore, factory may come under cost center. Then we are going to showroom. In showroom, we are not going to worry about the cost involved and all. There, our object is what? Whether the expected profit we got it or not. So, irrespective of the hospitality expenses, they may be going to give juice, coffee to attract the customer. Lights will be there. Okay, gifts will be there in the showroom if you are going to buy the products and all. They are not, we are not going to worry about one, how much they are going to spend, whether turnover, revenue, whether we got the revenue, achieved the expected turnover or not. That is called the one revenue center. Then, branch is there in that branch, whether it's viable or not whether we have to, the branch should be there or not. How much the cost of operating? How much the revenue out of the same? Therefore, net benefit profit is there or not. The profit is there mean that it's called one profit center. So it consists, and the head office is there. In head office, we are not going to worry about cost. We are not going to worry about profit. We are not going to worry about revenue. We are going to worry about how we are procured the fund and how we are going to utilize the fund, the procurement of fund and effective utilization of fund we are going to worry. Therefore, where to invest, whether we can purchase new machinery or not, whether we can be the person to produce the raw material itself or not, all those things we have to analyze. That is called one investment center. Therefore, if the company has a if you are going to think, factory room, factory will be there, showroom will be there, branches will be there, and head office will be there. So, head office is called investment center, branches center, all, profit center, showroom may be revenue center. Factory is a cost center, easy or not? Okay, so this understood. Now, types of differential cost. What are the two types of differential cost? What is called differential cost? Change in cost due to change in level of activity. Change in cost due to change in level of activity is called differential cost. Change in cost in our form, it may be increase or decrease. It's a change in cost. Change in level of activity whether increase in quantity or decrease in quantity. Therefore, change in cost due to change in level of activity is called one differential cost. Change in cost itself saying what? It may be increase or decrease. If it is increased, then it is called incremental cost. If it is decreased, then it is called decremental cost. Therefore, two types of differential costs are there. One is incremental cost, another one is decremental cost. Clear? Now, whenever you come across cost, very frequently asked a question, at least one question for every atom. Explain the direct question. Explain some cost they lost. What some cost? Explain the cost based on relationship. Can you please tell me based on relationship, what all the costs are there? Yes, tell me. Prakash, what all the costs are there based on relationship? Sudesh. What are all the costs are there? Maybe Priyam, Trayam, Akshaya. <clears throat> so, if they are going to ask specific definition, explain controllable cost, explain relevant cost, it's easy. But in general, in examination, they are asking, explain cost based on relationship. Then under relationship, what are all the costs are that is supposed to know? On the base of relationship, cost can be classified into direct cost and the indirect cost. Thereafter, you have to write the definition for the direct cost. Thereafter, you have to write the definition for the indirect cost. Understood? So, you should be proper with respect to what are all the cost classifications are there. Otherwise, you have to lose four to five marks. How many bases are there to classify the cost? 
Nivi, not correct. JST, not correct. Totally, how many bases are there? Uh, JST is correct. Yes. Yes, Nivi. Mm, correct. Yes. Direct and indirect only. Correct. Now, totally, how many bases are there? What all the bases in which you have to classify the cost? Any idea? You want any multiple choice options? So, with respect to cost basis of classification of cost, yes, eight bases are that to classify the cost. Basis in which classification is what? Eight bases. So, what are all the eight bases? Any idea about the eight bases of cost classification? Any one or two bases you can tell. All the eight bases difficult. At least one or two. Hmm. Yes. Next. Others also can try. Yeah. Eight basis, yeah, time-based classification. Yes, next. Element-wise classification, good, next. Behavior, also called what? Nature, behavior or nature or variability-wise classification. Behavior or nature or variability. Next. Yes, relationship, based on relationship-based classification. Then, yes, good, 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 right. Controllability wise, yes, based on controllability. Then normality, yes, based on normality. Then based on functionality, yes, based on function. Next, and based on decision making, yes, correct. That's all. So if you are going to consult it, you'll get the full mark. So, so what are all the basis in which you have to classify the cost? Time-based classification, element-based classification, behavior or nature or variability, relationship, controllability, normality, functionality, and decision-making. Very good, Kana. Very good. That's all. Beautiful. Yes, you know the answer. Just you have to what, consolidate everything so that you get the full mark. Good. Now, on the base of time, cost can be classified into historical cost, current cost, yeah, Saramana, not I am talking about sun cost, not talking about water, opportunity cost. Classification of cost, I am asking. Okay, first to broader classification, in that only relevant cost and all will come. Understood, Kana? Yes. So, so totally eight bases are there. Okay, Saramana, time based classification, element based classification, behavior or nature or variability, relationship, controllability, normality, functionality, decision making. On the base of time, cost can be classified into three types are there. What are they? Time-based classification. Okay. Historical cost, current cost, and predetermined the cost. Historical cost. Very time none at all, past tense, present tense, and future tense. Cost, history, present. So what is the running cost? Okay. And or current current, but current cost. And future predetermined the cost. Is, you know, so based on time, it can be classified into historical cost, current cost, and predetermined the cost. Then, based on element cost, can be classified into element represent what I am producing the product. To produce a product, what all the elements I need? I need a material element, I need a labor, I need other expenditure. Therefore, based on element cost, can be classified into material, labor, and the other expenditure. Based on behavior, cost can be classified into fixed cost, variable cost, and semi variable cost. Fixed, variable, and semi variable cost. On the base of, yes, on the base of relationship, cost can be classified into direct and indirect cost. Direct cost and indirect cost. On the base of normality, normal and abnormal cost. On the base of functionality, production, Administration, selling and distribution, research and development, pre production and conversion cost on the base of decision making, relevant and irrelevant cost. These are all the various types of cost classification. 
very good very good nice response keep it up the nivi kamaleshwaran swapna yesudish vijay good 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 keep it up okay screen is having frequently having some problem i don't know at least you can listen okay what happened okay i'll also parallel it right okay no <clears throat> next what all the we come across behavior wise classification based on behavior cost can be classified into what kind of fixed variable semi variable okay so i i am also not able to see the screen i'll restart the screen sharing again okay batch noise no it is visible i think I think it's possible. Yes. Yes, Kana. Yes, Abhi. Variable, variable cost, fixed cost, and semi-variable cost. You know what is called the variable cost? Cost which are going to vary depending upon volume of production is called variable cost. Cost which are not going to vary depending upon volume of production is called irrespective of the volume. It remains constant. Mean that is called the one fixed cost. Cost which are partly fixed in nature and the partly variable in nature is called semi variable cost partly fixed partly variable now in that if it is a semi variable cost partly fixed cost and partly variable in that circumstance we have to identify how to segregate the semi variable cost how to segregate general cost to variable cost separately and fixed cost separately for that five methods are there that is also frequently asked question the graphical method analytical method high point low point method least square method and comparison method what are they so what are i am showing those things should be have to transfer here okay fingertip la irukonu manapada pannida then only can score the mark anna clear then only this attempt should be the last attempt so try to remember all the points even if you are going to omit one points half mark will be reduced understood so what are the five methods of segregation of semi rule cost graphical method analytical method high point low point method least square method and comparison method understood out of attending today's session you should be comfortable yes 20 to 25 mark in my package after all you have to revise another one more time maximum one hour after the session you have to revise and we have to be happy yes 20 mark in 20 mark kai la irukku guaranteed pass this attempt definitely be my last attempt in that in that comfortness supposed to have okay now good kind of good features of good cost accounting system next important question features it should be tailor made what is called tailor made one is called ready made system another one is called tailor made system ready made na theriyum it's normal terminology only i am going to shop i am purchasing the shirt what is my size depending upon it's comfortable or not i am going to buy that is called the one ready made tailor made represent what i have to go to work. shop to purchase the what material only depending upon my requirement we are going to stitch then it is called the one tailor made prepare panni kudukuradha tailor made similarly cost accounting system you know very well if i am going to install tally then it is called the what tailor it's ready made system what is available we can we can use it then if it is called tailor made i am going to create on software what is relevant for my industry i am going to prepare that it is called one tailor made therefore therefore the cost accounting system should be tailor made or ready made which one is good yes it should be tailor made depending upon the industry we have to create the cost accounting system just like that we can the portion to use as it is yes screen again not visible what to do da how's they connected zoom with youtube creating some problem okay first point is one i am dictating slowly only you can be in the portion to write also first one is what it should be tailor made 
Second only, collected should, data should be accurate. Whatever the data we have collected, prompt accurate data should be there. Okay. Then cooperation between all the department. So if I'm going to install, all the department has to cooperate. Then only it should be called for a good cost accounting system. Cost to benefit should be matched. You know very well. Even to install the same, we have to incur the cost. Then what is the cost and what is the benefit out of which we have to identify? Yes, Kana. Cost to benefit we have to identify. So cost and benefit has to match. It should be worth it, nothing but okay. Then usage of network analysis, faith and the confidence. These are all the things we have to keep it in our mind before installing cost accounting system. Are you comfortable, Kana? So next one. Sometimes screen went black, black. So whenever screen come, kindly take the screenshot so that we can avoid the problem. We can continue without any disturbance. Okay. Technology should not affect our flow, right or not? Technology should not disturb our marks. Okay. So irrespective of the case, we have to complete, we have to clear. So kindly cooperate. Yes, my dear. For the next one, two types of cost and the decision making. Already we discuss what are the relevant costs and the irrelevant costs. Sometimes very frequently asked to question short notes on relevant cost. Costs which are useful for the purpose of decision making. Cost which are useful for the purpose of decision making is called relevant cost. And the cost which are not useful for the purpose of decision making is called irrelevant cost. Clear? So relevant and irrelevant cost. Next. Types of stores record. Yeah. Three types of stores record. Yes, yes, yes. I will share the notes also later. Okay, after finishing this. Good, Kana. Two types of stores record. Uh, sorry, three types of stores record. What are all the types are there? Pin card, stores ledger, and stock control card. These are all the one, three different types of stores record. What are all the pin card, stores ledger, and stock control card? So, in stores department, they have to maintain the record. What are all the records supposed to maintain? One is called the pin card. Pin card is mere quantitative data. Pin card is mere one quantitative data. Stores ledger. You know ledger. We come up with ledger represent what ledger folio will be there. Debit side will be there. Credit side will be there. Particulars, unit, rate, amount. Therefore, with respect to ledger, unit also will be there. Rate also will be there. Combination only called ledger. That is called what stores ledger consists of both quantitative and value based one. Clear. Next, third one is what? Stock control card. Stock control card is also quantitative record. Stock control card is also quantitative record. Therefore, three different types of stores records are there. What are they? Bin card, stores ledger, and stock, <coughs> stock control card. Okay, next. Yes, Anna. yes, recording the transaction. Yes, next. Two parts in Bin system, two bin system. Two bin system represent what? The bin, two bin, no, not a render bin. Okay, only one bin, one bin. Okay, Panjapatra means not five bathroom, only one. Okay, two bin represent what? One bin <coughs> divided into two parts. It's called a two bin. Okay, two bin system. No, no. Bin means what, first of all? Bin means it's not a dust bin. Okay, bin represent where we are going to keep the material is called bin. Okay, where we are going to keep the material. Yes, JST, correct, you are correct. Where you are going to keep the material. A bin on earth, the container is called bin. Container is called bin. Clear? Two bin system represent what? The container has been divided into, <coughs> divided into two parts. One is called base part, another one is called issue part. So two parts in two bin system. Suppose, inside assume chemical is there. Okay? Where I have to keep the chemical, I need a bottle. The bottle is called bin. Inside the chemical is called material, raw material. And this has to specify, outside sticker is going to specify, you know, whether water or Coke or cool drinks. Okay. So what is going to, which has some, uh, what some card should have to specify instead of sticker there in what are that called industry record cards will be there in stores. The card will specify, yes, it's a chemical. How many liters are there? This is the raw material, raw material X. How many units are there? So the sticker, nothing but the card is called the bin card. The card will be attached, attached to bin. That's why it's called a bin card. A bin another bin is a container. Okay. Card attached to the bin. 
Therefore, where there is a bin, the cord will be there. That cords are called bin cord. That two bin system represents in that bin, it can be divided into two parts. One is called one base part, another is called one issue part. Whenever we need the raw material, we have to take it from the issue part. Raw material current and labor, they keep on reducing after using the one, after taking the consume the raw material. Once it touches the base part, then it's an alarm for me. I have to repurchase. Then by, that's why it's called the one reorder level. That is logic or not? Clear? For that purpose, the two bin system is going to be used. Because the raw material is shortage, no raw material available, then what will happen? Production will go to get affected. Production got affected, mean what will happen? Then even there is no production, labor will be there. If there is no production, mean labor will be ideal. Then unproductive time will be there. Even for you have to pay the money. That's why we have to be very careful with respect to purchasing and refilling the raw material. Then <clears throat> expand HML, VED, FSN, GOLF, and SOS. HML stands for high price, medium price, low price material. We are discussing about material, okay? High price, medium price, low price material. <clears throat> Yes, Nirvoma. Yeah, screen sometimes getting goes blank. Okay, kindly adjust. Then next one is what VED, vital, essential, and desirable material. FSN represent fast moving, slow moving, and non moving stock. GOLF, government supply, ordinary supply, local supply, and foreign supply. SOS represent seasonal and off seasonal item. Are you mean in that? The most important one is FSM. Based on FSM, one question also they ask. FSM stands for what? Fast moving, slow moving, non moving star. With respect to FSM, they are given the raw material A, B, two raw material they are given in the past exam. That two compulsory question, five mark question they ask. Opening stock they are given. Purchase given. Clear? And uh, closing stock of raw material also given. I'll repeat, raw material A, B related information, opening stock, purchase, closing stock, find FSM. Student got plan. First, they don't know what is expansion for the FSM. Thereafter, what to do with the question. So you should be strong. That's why you have to be study linked with the theory. Everything linked with the theory. Only. Okay. Now, with respect to fast moving, slow moving, non, uh, with respect to what? Fast moving, slow moving, non moving stock. We have to identify inventory turnover ratio. What is the formula for inventory turnover ratio? Yes. We need raw material consumption data. Yes. And average raw, average stock of raw material we need. So average stock very easy. Opening stock of raw material plus closing stock of raw material divided by 2 is equal to average stock. Liam, opening plus closing divided by 2 is equal to average stock. Yes. Then, what the next one? Raw material consumption. How to identify the raw material consumption with respect to raw material consumption? <clears throat> opening stock of raw material, add purchase, less closing stock of raw material. Am I right? Is equal to balance is called what? How much raw material consumed? Based on inventory turnover ratio, we can identify fast moving, slow moving, or non moving stock. All are comfortable or not? Okay. Higher than inventory turnover ratio, we'll get one fast moving. And lower than inventory turnover ratio is a slow moving or non moving star. Sometimes three material also they may ask. So that we can identify fast moving, slow moving, and non moving star. Yes, can I? Yes, good. Can I? Then, so the small line item FSN, based on that, they created five mark question. Then, three categories of inventory center preparato. Pareto analysis also called one selective stock control analysis, also called one ABC analysis, also called 70 is to 20 is to 10 analysis. Clear. Pareto analysis. Here we are going to classify the inventories into three categories A category, B category item, and C category item. Clear. That's why ABC analysis. It's purely based on value involved. It's purely based on what? Value involved. A category item, high value. C category item, low value. B category item, moderate value. 
out of total inventory, 70% roughly, 70% may going to be called A category item. Yes, Kana. Yes, maybe correct. So 20% represent what? Moderate item, B category. 10% represent what? C category item. Very good. Next. Advantage. Why we need advantage? Uh, why we need what ABC analysis? Why we have to classify the item? If I'm going to classify the system, first we have the better control, control by exception. All the stock very difficult to control, but we can have the proper control value, uh, control over high value item. Cost to saving, we can be the person to minimize the cost. So if I'm going to have the proper control, I can have the minimization of cost saving. Then smooth flow, organization, the run flow will be smoothly and the standardization of work will be there. Okay, these are all the four advantages, very frequently asked a question. What are the four advantages of ABC analysis? What are the cost saving, control by exception, smooth flow, and standardization of work? It's not them. Then four types of material losses. With respect to material loss, loss of material. Why material is going to get loss? The loss with respect to it may be broadly classified into two types. One is not due to damage. Another one is due to damage, not due to damage and due to damage. Under not due to damage, it may be because of wastage or scrap. Due to damage because of spoilage or defective. Okay, this is also very frequently asked a question. You explain wastage, scrap, spoilage, defective and what are all the accounting treatment of wastage, scrap, spoilage, defective? Sometimes different between wastage, scrap, scrap and defective. Clear combination, combined one, any one of the question may going to come for the exam. Therefore, this particular segment is important. So I'll repeat once again. Material loss broadly classified into two types. One is not due to damage. Another one is due to damage. Under not due to damage, two types are there. Wastage, scrap, and due to damage, spoilage, and defective. So wastage represent one, there is no resale value waste, therefore wastage. Scrap represent one, it has come scrap value, resale value. In process passing, how much the normal loss, scrap value of the normal loss, you should it or not, some revenue, small income you can get. Then spoilage represent one, not rectifiable, whereas defective represent rectifiable. This is what the difference among wastage, scrap, spoilage, and defective. Okay. Next. Two types of wastage. What are they? Visible and invisible. Visible wastage, invisible. Take petroleum industry. What are the waste is happening? Operation happen? Maybe invisible. Okay. So it can be cluttered into visible and invisible. Like our screen sometimes invisible. Okay. Next. Methods of timekeeping with respect to labor methods of timekeeping. Yes. With respect to methods of timekeeping, there are two methods are there. Easy one. One is what? Manual method. Now it is digital, mechanical method. Under manual method, it may be Atman's register or metal disk method. Under mechanical method, it may be time recording clock, dial time, dial time record, punch card, biometric system. These are all one, four different methods of mechanical record. So under manual record, Atman's register and metal disk register, metal disk method, whereas mechanical method, time recording clock, digital, that is what, dial time record, punch card, and biometric device. Time booking, next one. With respect to time booking, it may be by way of job ticket, combined time and job ticket, daily timesheet, piece work card, and clock card. These are all five methods of time booking. You should, the next important question out of this itself, difference between timekeeping and time booking. Difference between timekeeping and time booking. Timekeeping represent what? Total time spent by the worker inside the factory is called a time booking. Whereas time booking represent worker by worker, day by day, department by department. How many hours they spend productively is called time booking. So this is what the difference between time keeping and time booking. How many hours workers are there inside the factory is called time, time keeping. In factory, department wise, productively, 
how many hours they spend, then it is called one time booking. So timekeeping versus time booking. Booking time, nothing but productive time. So by way of time booking, we can identify effective time, nothing but productive time. By way of timekeeping, we identify total time. Understood? So the difference between productive time and total time. Difference between time as for timekeeping record, record and time as a time booking record is called what? Unutilized time. The unutilized time is called what? Idle time. What do you mean by idle time? Time during which workers are not engaged in the production activity. Time during which workers are not engaged in the production activity. But paid wages, but paid wages, even for such unproductive time, but paid wages, even for such unproductive time is called one idle time. So understood what is called, yes, Kanna. Time, uh, what is called the timekeeping, what is called time booking, or what is called the idle time. Clear. Now, the next one is what? Two methods of computation of labor turnover. What do you mean by labor turnover? Labor turnover represents how many workers are coming and joining in my office, <laughs> and how many workers are moving out from the office is called what? Labor turnover. Number of workers coming into the office and the number of workers go out from the office is called one labor turnover. That we have to express in terms of percentage. Clear? So, with respect to labor turnover, change in labor force, change in labor force during a particular period of time, again suitable index is called labor turnover. Change in labor force during a particular period of time, again some suitable index is called labor turnover. So, how many workers are coming and how many workers are going out from the organization is called a labor turnover. Now, we have to express the labor turnover in terms of percentage. Can you please tell me, higher the labor turnover is best or lower the labor turnover is best? Yes. Higher the labor turnover is best or lower the labor turnover is best? Yes, it should be lower. Clear? Why lower the labor turnover is best? Labor turnover happen means it's a loss to the company. Company has to incur some cost. Therefore, to the detection possible, we have to minimize the labor turnover. Okay. Why? What would be the reason for labor turnover? Why workers are going out from the organization? No, no, no. Lower the labor turnover is best. Sir, no, not higher. Higher means cost to the company's cost will be high. So, lower the labor turnover is preferable. Clear. Now, with respect to Narayabir, obviously, to develop one another career. Konjama one another. So, lower the labor turnover is preferable. Otherwise, keep on, whoever will go out, we have to keep on, either provide the training, it's an extra cost to the company. Yes, yeah. Gautam, yes, correct, you are correct. Then, the next one. What could the reason for labors are going out from the office? <clears throat> Why they have to go out from the office? Maybe work pressure. Clear? Or dissatisfaction. Low wages. Yeah. The wages will be low. Yes, correct. Good, Australian, correct. Then, yeah, personal reason. Very good. Kamaleshwara, very good. Keep it up. Yeah, personal reason. Ill health, work pressure. Yes. So, better opportunity. So, these are all the, yes, these are all the reason for. Or is that? So, this is not the reason begin one labor turnover. Then, the reason can be broadly classified into three types. Kanna. Yes, reason can be broadly classified into three types. One is called personal causes. Reason nothing but causes, reason not causes, personal causes, avoidable causes, and unavoidable causes. Personal, avoidable, and unavoidable reason. This is all one, three causes for labor number. Then methods of computation of labor number. And a few of them wrote that methods can be broadly first classified into two types. <clears throat> one is without expansion, another one is with the expansion. Under without expansion, separation method, replacement method, and mixed method. Under with expansion, 
separation, accession, and flux method. These are all what? Different methods of segregation of labor time. Clear? So I'll repeat once again without expansion and with expansion. Under without expansion, three methods separation, replacement, and mixed method. Under with expansion, three methods separation, accession, and the flux method. Okay, my dear student, if accordingly formulas also the separation method S by L, S represents number of separation, L represents average labor force. Replacement method R by L, mixed method S plus R by L. Under width expansion, separation method, S by L. Accession method, A by L. Flux method, S plus A by L. We have to, since we have to express in terms of percentage, you have to multiply with them and 100. But in examination, they won't specify. Okay, dear Sharavana, kindly solve the problem by way of width expansion. So they ask you to compute only relevant labor, we have to compute only labor turnover, find the labor turnover. That's what will be there. So it is your duty to identify whether with expansion or without expansion, accordingly three different sets of or not, you have to adopt. Understand logic or not? Therefore, how to identify whether the problem is based on with or without expansion, accordingly formula also going to change, you know. I am going to expand my business. I am going to expand my business. If I'm going to expand the business, then I need additional worker. So, whenever new recruitments are there in this question, whenever new recruitments are there in this question, we have to solve the problem by way of with expansion, else without expansion. Understood? So, in today's discussion, we are not only discussing about the theory part alone, how to approach the practical part also we are telling, right or not? If you come tomorrow without preparing the theory part, it's difficult for it to understand why we apply that particular order with expansion or without expansion. Clear. That's why I told you all the concepts are there in the theory. So you should be strong in the concept theory. Clear. Then only you can understand the question itself. Many occasions the question asked, but without knowingly, they said what? With, in case of without expansion, they'll solve it by your with expansion or vice versa. So you won't get any more calls. Clear. Next. <clears throat> what are the next one? Whenever labor turnover arises, we have to incur the cost. Salawa, Leon, what type of cost you are going to incur? Labor turnover is happening. Suppose I don't want to incur any labor turnover. All the workers should be there in my office itself. Then what to do? Then what I have to do? Are you able to follow or not? Workers should not go out from my office. Then what I have to do? Is it practically possible? Then I have to satisfy the worker. In what basis you have to satisfy the worker? How it is possible to satisfy the worker? Yes. So I have to satisfy the worker by way of providing perquisites, uniform allowance, children's education allowance. Yes, come on. Good, come on. Yes. Yeah, pick up and drop, cap facility, conveyance facility. Yes. So these are all the things I have to consider. I have to what? Do the reimburse. Bonus. Yes, we all want the bonus. Yes, good karma. So if I'm going to satisfy the worker, they won't go. Those things are called, yes, incentive. Correct one. Yes, premium, incentive. Yes, correct, correct. Good karma. Good. So I have to satisfy. Then only I can retain my worker. Those things are called, I am preventing you to go out from the office. Obviously, to pay there. you should be there in the office. Then it is called what? Prevention cost. Yes, it's called, comes under prevention cost. Now, in spite of that, due to various reasons, they went, for, go out from the, went from the office. Then what I have to do? I have to appoint new person. Am I right or not? Yes, I have to appoint new person. Then I have to incur additional expenses. Training expenses I have to incur. What extra I have to incur? Yes, advertisement cost. HR department going to recruit the people. New worker may not going to work properly. In the circumstance, I may going to incur a loss. So these are all the other costs I have to incur. Those things are called one replacement cost. Because of replacement, I have incurred the cost. That's why it's called one replacement cost. So two costs are incurred with respect to labor turnover. What are all the 
prevention cost and replacement cost. Very good, Prana. Now, can you please tell me, low prevention cost leads to dash. Because next, next exam onwards, this type of question will have to incur. You have to what accept, expect. Low prevention cost lead to dash labor turnover. What would the answer come on? Low prevention cost. Prevention cost is less than labor turnover will be dash. Yes, labor turnover will be high because if I'm not going to satisfy the workers, then labor turnover is going to get increased. Yes, good, 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 good. Next, high labor turnover leads to low dash cost. High labor turnover leads to. Yes, Nirbhuma, Kamalesh, good. Srinidhi, good. Now, the next question is high labor turnover leads to dash low, low water. Yes, ah, correct. High labor turnover leads to which cost will be increased? Labor turnover more means. Yes, replacement cost will be more. Yes, prevention cost will be. Yes, high labor turnover leads to high replacement cost. High labor turnover leads to high replacement cost. Okay, sir. Labor turnover happened. Now we got the clarity. Okay, labor turnover happened. How to? How to, what are the ways to minimize the labor turnover? Ultimately, to the extent possible, lower the labor turnover only preferable. <clears throat> so, the lower the labor turnover is preferable. How I have to minimize the labor turnover? What are all the ways are that to minimize the labor turnover? labor turnover for you. Yes, what are all the ways or that to minimize the labor turnover now? Yes, by way of exit interview, five steps are there. Okay, exit interview. What is called exit interview? At the time of your going out from the organization, what would the reason for goes out? I have to ask. Exit interview. Next one is what? Job analysis and evaluation, scientific system of recruitment. Enlightened attitude of management and use of committee. These are all one various ways to steps to minimize the labor turnover. What are they? <laughs> Exit interview, job evaluation, job analysis and evaluation, scientific system of recruitment, enlightened attitude of management and use of committee. <clears throat> then over time, what is the accounting treatment of over time? Good. What do you mean by overtime? Over and above the normal working hours, the workers are working, then it is called overtime. Extra time work. Then what is called a normal hours as per the Indian Factories Act, obviously. As per the Indian Factories Act, if the workers are worked more than nine hours a day or 48 hours a week, more than nine hours a day or 48 hours a week, then it is called overtime. Understood? So, any one of the condition, not both the condition. In the process. In the problem. Thank you so much. Okay. So, coffee in the one. Coffee in the Coffee in the yes. More than nine hours a day or 48 hours a week. Any one condition satisfied, that is sufficient. Okay. That is called the one overtime. Then, whenever overtime arises in India, in case of overtime, we have to pay double the normal rate of wages. In India, in case of overtime, yes, we have to pay double the normal rate of wages. Thus, excess amount is called that excess amount is called one overtime premium OTP, not one time password, overtime premium. Clear. Then, the very frequently asked the question what about the accounting treatment of the overtime premium? Now, can you please tell me whether you understood properly or not? I want to uh, know. Then only according to the overtime premium you can understand. What is the overtime you have understood? Can you please tell me? Number of hours worked. Okay. Yes. Number of hours worked. 
in a week. Fifty. How many hours worked? Fifty hours. Wage rate. Fifty comes or much? Okay, fifty hours. Wage rate per hour. Yes, it's coming. Rupees ten. Can you please find overtime premium? Thereafter, you can go for accounting treatment of overtime. Hours work at 50. Okay. And wage rate per hour is 10. What could the overtime premium? Yes, okay, Kamalesh. Amount, amount. How much overtime premium in amount? How much amount can overtime premium? Nadia, Jayashree, Trainu, Arun. So you know the value of overtime premium. Then only you can go for the accounting treatment of the overtime. Yes. J. Rahun is telling 20 rupees. Priya is telling 40. You are also telling 40. Priya is telling 20. No, no. Other person is saying 40 only. Still, uh, double the normal rate of wages, I said. Okay. Therefore, 40. Good. So all of them converted into 40 now. Uh, Stay around 40, JS3 40. Good. So why 40? Two hours only overtime, no. Two into 10 is equal to 20 only, no. Why 40? What would be the reason? Yes, rightly said. In general, in India, in case of overtime, we're going to get one double the normal rate of wages. That's the reason. Am I right or not? Very good. Can you please tell me? Listen carefully and tell with respect to overtime. The excess amount is called overtime premium. I said, and it's logic or not. So, for two hours, two hours of overtime, no doubt. Two hours is how much I supposed to pay? Two hours into 10 is equal to 20. I supposed to pay, but double the normal rate you have to pay. Up two hours into 40, I have to pay. Am I right? So, two hours into 20 is equal to 40. I have to pay. Therefore, 40 I paid. 20 is supposed to pay. Therefore, how much say excess amount I paid? 20. The remaining 20 only called overtime premium. Understood logic, logic or not? You see, overtime, two hours. No doubt in overtime, two hours. No? Okay. Normal wages. Okay. Two hours into 10 is equal to 20 rupees. No doubt, no. Overtime premium, two hours into again, 10 rupees is equal to 20. Are you able to follow or not? Therefore, total wages is equal to 20 plus 20, 40. You got the idea or not? Therefore, what is overtime premium here? Ah, understood. Very good, Anna. very good. So 20 rupees work on your car. If you work it, that's a wages only. How much you paid extra additional 20 you paid? No, that additional 20 you only called overtime premium. Something very good. Kana. So hereafter, you should not commit the mistake. That's the reason theory part is important. Because twice they ask the computation of overtime premium itself. That's logic or not. Clear. So if you're going to take 40, that's all fully wrong. You have to take only 20 rupees on normal wages, additional 20 rupees on overtime premium. Clear, Kana? all are comfortable? Good, good, good. Very good. Keep it up. <clears throat> Now, according, now we can discuss what is the accounting treatment of overtime premium. With respect to overtime premium, the reason for the overtime is because of shortage of worker, adequate workers are not there. Then we have to charge to the excess amount, whatever we paid, we have to charge to cost of production, form part of cost of production. Due to customer's desire, then we have to charge to particular job itself, customer want urgently. Due to Diwali season or day after tomorrow is my birthday, I am urgently asking to stitch and give the shirt. Then he has to work for extra overtime. Then the excess amount I have to pay. Understood? Yes, Kana. Good. Then, if it is due to urgent reason, customer has to pay. Due to fault of the particular department, which department committed a mistake, that department has to pay. Due to abnormal condition, then any abnormal, you have to transfer to. Costing penalty. These are the accounting treatment of overtime premium 
more than seven times the same question has been asked. Different, what are the accounting treatment of overtime premium? Four accounting treatments are there. Clear? Good. Then, five different basis of overhead absorption. What are the basis in which you have to do the absorption? Whenever you come across overhead, you know, collection, classification, allocation, apportionment, and reapportion. Yes, costing pay and account only. Yes, correct. Five different basis of apportionment. In the last step is called recovery, recovery rate per hour. That's the absorption. In what are all the basis in which you have to do the absorption? Percentage of direct material, percentage of direct labor, percentage of prime cost, labor or rate, mission or rate. These are all the various basis in which overhead absorptions are there. Methods of reapportionment. When reapportionment arises, whenever, whenever you come across service department, our duty is what? Transferring of service department expenses to the production department is called reapportionment. Transferring of service department expenses to the production department. Whenever you come across reapportionment, what are the ways are that do the reapportionment? Three different methods are there direct distribution method, step later method, and reciprocal method, direct distribution, step ladder, and reciprocal. So, direct distribution, step ladder, and reciprocal method. Under reciprocal method, two different things are there. Simultaneous equation and repeated distribution method. Simultaneous equation and repeated distribution. In examination, again, they won't mention which method is applicable. Dear JS3, kindly solve the problem by way of reciprocal method. They won't be any clue. Then how to identify JS3? Whether direct distribution or step letter or reciprocal method. So if the service department render services only to the production department, okay? Not which one is preferable or not, depending upon the circumstance you have to choose, okay? So, hmm, Service department render only to the production department. Then we have to go by way of direct distribution method, not based on our choice. Okay. Second one, one service department rendering services to production department as well as the another service department. Whereas another service department renders services only to the production department. Then we have to solve it by way of yes, step letter method. Last one is what both the service departments are render services to each other, then it is called reciprocal method. These are all the methods we have to apply. Okay? So you have to read the question, which method is applicable, suitable, accordingly you have to choose. X renders services to, service department X renders services to A, B, C and Y. Service department Y renders services to A, B, C and X. Then reciprocal, non service service and service. In this juncture, we have to solve it by way of reciprocal method. Are you comfortable, Kanam? Clear? <clears throat> yes. Condition for using blanket overhead rate. There are two different types of rates are there. One is departmental rate, another one is blanket overhead rate. <clears throat> departmental and blanket overhead rate. What is called departmental rate? Each and every department Separate, separate method, separate, separate water. Recovery rate we are going to apply mean that is called one departmental rate. Blanket rocker the company as a whole, department one, department two, department two, all the department, one predetermined rate if I'm going to fix, then it is called departmental rate. Uh, when it is called one blanket overhead rate. Whenever, when blanket overhead rate arises, there are two conditions. Just like that, you can't the apply same, same rate for all the department. One, when only one major product has been produced. One major product is produced. Another condition. When several products are produced, then all the product process through all the department and all processes are having same wavelength of time. In this circumstance, we can use, yes, in this circumstance, we can use water. Blanket water again. Else, department rate is preferable. Departmental rate will be more accurate than blanket overhead rate. But with respect to departmental rate, extra expenses company has to incur. Understood? 
Next. What are all the three according treatment of ideal capacity? What do you mean by ideal capacity? Unutilized capacity is called ideal capacity. If it is uh, unutilized means what? Utilization, I'm having five machines. I'm utilizing only three machines because there is no proper demand. Then the remaining two machines is called ideal capacity. Then what about the treatment of ideal capacity? Cost of the ideal capacity due to unavoidable reason, then it is treated as overhead. Due to avoidable reason, then charge to costing pedal account. Due to seasonal factor, form part of cost of production. This is all the treatment with respect to ideal capacity cost. Then treatment of packing expenses with respect to packing, packing charges based on that one past exam question with respect to process costing itself there. Okay, 16 more question based on packing expenses cost. With respect to packing expenses, <clears throat> three different types of packing, primary packing, secondary packing and the special packing. Primary packing will form part of the prime cost, direct material, therefore prime cost. Secondary packing will come under the selling and distribution overhead. Special packing directly have to charge to particular job itself. Therefore, three different types of packing. Clear? Yeah. Just a minute, I'll come back. <laughs> Yeah, shall we start? Sorry. Now, with respect to difference among the primary packing, secondary packing, and special packing. Primary packing, you are going to purchase toothpaste. Is it possible for, him to, for you to ask him? Give two space in this many grams are in a hand. Is it possible? Cool drinks. Awesome to pure the cool drink. Is it possible to to drink like that? Without having container, they may not the person to sell. That container for tube, the paste, container for the paste, container for the cream, clip, or container for the what? Cool drinks comes under the primary packing. Without that packing, that product may not the person to reach the customer. Secondary packing, okay, product is there. All the product we have to bundle together for the purpose of transportation purpose. That will come from selling and distribution. Special packing, what is called a special packing? Gift wrapper. Then we have to bear the cost. Depending upon costly material, normal material, we have to bear the additional cost. Now, got the idea or not? That's why 
with respect to packing expenses it may be consist of primary secondary and special packing primary packing will form part of prime cost secondary packing is a distribution selling and distribution cost and the other one is called special packing form part of cost of the product itself we have to bear the cost particular customer has to bear it then prerequisites of integral accounting system are you clear up to this stage kanna now with respect to prerequisites of integral accounting system what is called integral accounting system integrated accounting system or integral accounting system yes if i am going to maintain cost accounting and financial accounting records cost accounting records as well as financial accounting records in one set of book then it is called integral cost accounting separately and the financial accounting separately then it is called one yes non integral accounting separate separate books of account means called non integral accounting system and the one set of book is it is called one integral accounting system integral accounting system in school days we maintain the notebooks right language different notebook max different notebook okay science okay separate separate notebook one important notebook we used to maintain called rough notebook am i right or not separate separately we used to have notebook adu gatta potu jatta potu label otti mail la potu we used to maintain separate separately then it is called one non integral accounting system the moment you join ca course first phase onwards accounts last phase onwards import tax in between what law paper so combined manner all in one notebook two in one notebook okay that's called what integral accounting system now if it is integral then cost saving time saving along with now what are the prerequisites for integration in which the company could do the integration extent of integration coding system standardization and the coordination these are all the important points what are the extent of integration coding system standardization and coordination then four reason for reconciliation of cost of accounting and financial accounting profit listen here my dears the concept of reconciliation arises only in case of only in case of non integral accounting system if i am having integral accounting system cost accounting and financial accounting only one book then only one profit there is no need for any reconciliation then reconciliation arises cost accounting department separately financial accounting department separately cost accountant is going to take care of the cost accounting records chartered accountant is going to take care of financial accounting record the profit as per the financial accounting may not be equal to profit as per the cost accounting why why there is a different profit period remain the same product remain the same purchase remain the same sales remain the same transaction remain the same why there is a different difference in profit the reason few items applicable only in cost accounting but not in financial accounting notional interest applicable only in cost accounting the concept of notional will not arise in financial accounting actual data only few items applicable only in financial accounting but not in cost accounting financial account mattum da irukum what dividend pay rent received profit on sale of equipment loss on sale of some asset these are all applicable only in yes kanna only in that particular cost financial account only but not in cost accounting due to that difference in profit arises method of depreciation in cost accounting we may go into prepare straight line method whereas in financial accounting assume we are preparing wdb then depreciation because of the difference in amount of depreciation difference may come then next one is what valuation stock valuation in case of costing we have to value purely based on cost cost of production whereas in finance cost and nrv whichever is buyer yard pay due to that we have to what difference will come this was the reason for doing reconciliation items included in the financial accounting but not in cost accounting items included in the cost accounting only but not in financial accounting difference in method of depreciation 
difference in base of inventory valuation. Next, advantages of cost plus contract with respect to cost plus contract. How much the cost incurred plus additional profit I need. Then it's called the value of the contract is called cost plus contract. Here, assured percentage of profit, irrespective of the escalation, irrespective of the changes in price, we are going to get guaranteed profit. Therefore, assured percentage of profit. Useful for the work to be done is uncertain. Like metro rail, how much the cost may going to incur? I cannot put the estimate properly. Then it is then better to go by way of costless contract. Contract is empowered to examine the books of a home. Because how much the cost incurred, it should be transparent. Therefore, contractee is having the right to verify my books of account. The third one, advantages of cost plus contract. So all of you, manageable, available, read them. Very big silence, no response from the students. What happened? King <clears throat> Good. I got next one. Let me read the one. Okay. Next. Two types of computation of composite unit. What is called the composite unit? The composite can, unit can be created into two types. Okay, thank you, Gautam. Thank you, Satya. Thank you. Composite unit may be absolute 10 kilometer and commercial 10 kilometer. It can be one absolute 10 and commercial 10 kilometer. It's called the composite unit. Combination, combo, more than one. If I'm going to produce a tangible product, I can identify. What are the cost of the pen? What are the cost of the mobile? I can be the potential per unit cost of that particular product. But in case of service sector, more than one component will come under composite unit for the cost unit. Up in bus transport, how many kilometers you are traveling is important. How many passengers is important. Up a passenger kilometer. Assume I'm traveling for 5 kilometers and Satya is traveling for 20 kilometers. A passenger kilometer is a matter with respect to cost unit. What I am going to pay ticket charges may not going to equal to you. That's why it's called more than one compo will form a unit. That's called composite unit. Clear? Or lorry, vehicle, uh, or goods transport, 10 kilometer. How many ton carries and how many kilometers carries? It's called one comes under. 10 kilometer. It can be classified into two types, absolute 10 kilometer and commercial 10 kilometer. Clear? So it's a very frequently asked question. Okay, Srimadhi, what are the two things? Absolute 10 kilometer and commercial 10 kilometer. Comfortable? Next. Advantages of inter-profit, inter-process profit. In general, in process costing, in general, output of the one process is going to become input for the next process. If output of the one process is going to transfer to the next process, after adding profit, then it is called inter-process profit method. Understood? Output of the one process transfer to the next process. After adding profit, then it is called one Inter-process profit method. Then, what are the, what are the advantages to respect to inter-process profit? It gets to compare the cost of output and its market price. Each process is considered as a cost, each process is considered as a profit center because they're transferring cost plus profit. Therefore, every process is called profit center. So, in process costing, what is cost and You know what is called the cost center, what is called the cost unit, right? In process costing, what is called the cost center, my dears? Which one is a cost center? And what is called the cost unit in process costing? Vishant, which one is the cost center? And what is the cost unit? Maybe 
நிவி கல்யாண் கிரீன் கே கன்சல்டன்சி டெல் மீ வாட் காஸ்ட் சென்டர் அண்ட் வாட் காஸ்ட் இன் ப்ராசஸ் காஸ்ட் எஸ் காஸ்ட் சென்டர் இன் கேஸ் ஆஃப் ப்ராசஸ் காஸ்டிங் த காஸ்ட் சென்டர் இஸ் வாட் no no not the right not the place place is not the cost center here no nivi no okay you are talking about cost unit i am asking cost center yeah yes cost center is each and every process is a cost center what is called cost center each and every process i out incur a cost therefore each and every process will comes under the cost center yes cost unit output of the end product is called one cost unit okay so output of the end product which is saleable product is called one cost unit clear now can you please tell me in this circumstance cost center and the cost units are same enga cost center is equal to cost unit kamaleshwara solo avam in process costing every process is a cost center and output of the process is a cost unit in which there comes in cost center is equal to cost unit shrimadi can try no shrinidhi also can try jay stream <coughs> cost center and the cost unit tell me in which circumstance cost center is equal to cost unit hmm? yes both are not same okay nibi i am talking in which circumstance both will be same cost center is equal to cost unit that is what my question in process costing process is a, every process a cost center whereas output is a cost unit am i right yeah very good ashwini you are correct yes in case of contract costing cost center and cost unit both are same in case of contract costing very good in contract where i am going to incur the cost each and every process i have to incur the cost sorry each and every contract i have to incur the cost therefore contract is my cost center understood and what are the cost unit by way of selling the contract i am going to recover the income therefore that contract is itself my cost unit and so logic or not so in case of contract costing contract is a cost center and the contract is itself cost unit therefore cost center and the cost units are same in case of contract costing are you comfortable or not okay five minutes for right i'll come <clears throat> next so are you comfortable with respect to cost center and the cost unit kanna now got the clarity yeah good kanna yeah profit will be there where i am going to incur the cost is called cost center every contract every building i have to incur the cost therefore contract is a cost center then cost unit is what how i am going to recover the cost by way of selling the the building i am going to incur the cost in i am going to recover the money therefore every contract is my cost unit so in case of contract costing cost center and the cost units are same are you comfortable okay <clears throat> next yes i am going to finish sir covid okay so i'm having another one members program that's why okay next three accounting treatment of by product you know what is called by product joint product and by product both the products are we am going to prepare together then it is called one joint product intentionally if i'm going to manufacture then it is called joint product while producing one main product incidentally or accidentally the another product is also emerged the resultant product is called 
byproduct. Then what is the treatment of byproduct with respect to accounting treatment of byproduct? Byproduct value is small, then it is called, then we have to treat it as a miscellaneous income, small value, like scrap value. Okay. Then if the considerable value, then it's no longer called byproduct. Value is high. Then it is called joint product itself. It required further processing. Then after incurring the cost, net to cost to the company, further processing cost after considering the same, the net plus net ended realizable value is small. Then we have to treat as a miscellaneous income. If it got a big net realizable value treated as what big, then it form part of treated as a joint cost. Okay. So with respect to byproduct, you know what is called byproduct? Sugar is a main product. My intention is to pro produce a sugar. Molasses is my byproduct. Yes. Nell, okay, paddy, out of paddy, we are converting into rice. Yeah. Then, while converting paddy into rice, in our room, husk, umi or taudu or the taudu is called the one, the husk is called my byproduct. A main product. My intention is to produce the rice only, but incidentally or accidentally, another product is also emerged. The resultant product is called <coughs> yeah, byproduct. Then, in case of soap manufacturing company, what could be byproduct? Yes, in case of soap manufacturing company, <coughs> glycerin is my byproduct. Yes. Now, what the concept? Then accounting treatment, depending upon the value, the accounting treatment may go into it. Then how to apportion the cost of the joint product? The incurring joint product. Yes. How to apportion the cost? Then with respect to apportionment of joint cost, physical unit method, average unit cost method, technical point or technical evaluation method, contribution margin method, <coughs> market value method. Under market value method, market value at split off point, market value after further processing, <laughs> and the NRV method. These are all the various methods are there for apportionment of joint cost. For your kind info, even in this for joint product by product, methods of apportionment of joint cost in examination, they won't give the specific info which method is applicable. First, you should know what are all the methods are there for apportioning the joint cost. Physical unit, average unit cost method, technical point method, contribution margin method, market value method, market value, market value to sit point, market value after further processing, and whether all the methods are portion. And depending upon the availability of the information in this question, we have to identify which method is applicable. Got it or not? Got it. Different, three different accounting treatment procedure. What are they? Partial plan. Single plan, dual plan in case of standard costing. Okay. Single plan, whenever variance occurs, immediately I'm going to give the posting. Transaction going to be the posting, then it's called a single plan. Partial plan, with respect to partial plan, trans variance has happened. I'm accumulating. Cumulatively, I'm going to post the entry, then it's called a partial plan. Dual plan. I am going to express the variance in terms of percentage. <laughs> then it is called dual plan. Three methods of disposal of variance in standard costing. Variance has happened, expectation, the actual, some difference has happened, the variance. What are the accounting treatment? Three different methods are there for disposal of variance. One is write off all the variance in PNL account, transfer to PNL account. Or pro rata basis, you can apportion. Where I have to apportion product of basis, cost of sales, WAB, finished goods in that ratio, we can apportion with the respective product. Our third one, quantity variance, transfer to costing pedal account, price variance, we can do product of basis. Clear. This product of basis, cost of sale, WAB, and finished goods, somewhere we read also. In case of difference in absorption. In case of underabsorption, abnormal reason transferred to costing pedal account. 
whereas normal reason form part of cost of production. Cost of production where I have to force pay from up to out of portion. Partly you have to transfer to closing stock of finished goods. Partly number of units sold and the partly out of portion pay from unit scrap. That is what WAP percentage of completion based on the WAP. So based on that we have to apportion the cost. So how many WAP quantities are there? How many finished goods are there? How many units you have sold? According to the atop portion. Similar to this, here are the disposal of variance. PV ratio, how to improve the PV ratio? Profit volume ratio, contribution, total by sales in the 100 is equal to PV ratio. You know, right? Numerator contribution, denominator sales in the 100. So, contribution to present what? Sales minus variable cost is equal to contribution. So, numerator sales variable cost, denominator sales. Up only two elements are there. One is variable cost, another one is contribution. Uh, another one is what? Sales. So if there is an increase in sales, we can improve PV ratio. If I'm going to decrease the variable cost, I can improve PV ratio. Or another one is what? If I'm going to change the sales mix, more than one products are there, then more profitable product, I'm going to sell more. Less profitable product, I'm going to concentrate less. Then PV ratio will get increased. Understood? How to improve the PV ratio? Easy one, you know. If you know the formula, Sales minus variable cost is numerator called contribution denominator is M. Sales in 100. Selling price increase the selling price, decrease the variable cost or M what change the sales mix pattern. Okay. Then BEP break even point. Yes. With respect, how to improve the break even point or what are all the ways are the not improve? Where are that the break even point chart? Ready at that. Yes. So five different or six different ways are that one break even chart, contribution break even chart, cash break even chart, control break even chart, analytical break even chart, product price BEP chart, and the profit graph. These are all one six different types of break even chart. Then practical applications in marginal costing. Four applications. Why we need a marginal costing for the purpose of fixation of price pricing policy. Decision making, ascertaining realistic profit, determination of production level. For the purpose, we need marginal cost will be useful. Then, how the product cost will be useful? Purpose of product cost, cost for unit product cost, preparation of financial statement, product pricing, and a contract with the government agency. Agency, how much the cost incurred we have to decide. For the purpose, product cost will be useful. useful. Three different groups of functional budget. What are all the functions of the physical budget, cash budget, profit budget? Broadly classified into physical, cash, profit. You know, sales budget, production budget, raw material usage budget, raw material consumption budget. This all comes into physical budget. It's so broadly classified into physical, cost, and profit budget. Then, with respect to ABT, activity based costing, what are all the cost drivers are there? One is cost object, and another one is cost driver. Cost or object represent what? Item for which the cost measurement is required is called the cost objects. Factor that causes a change in cost of an activities are called the cost driver. That cost driver can be cut into two types. One is resource cost driver, another one is activity cost driver. How many types of activities are there? Four types of activities. The four types of activities are called also called hierarchy in cost or ABC. What are all the four types of activities in ABC? Unit level activity, batch level activity, product level activity, and facility level activity. Each and every unit I'm going to incur the cost means unit level activity. Irrespective of the number of unit, I'm going to incur the cost based on the batch, then it is called the batch level activity. Then, irrespective of the number of unit, irrespective of the batch, the product as a whole I'm going to incur the cost is called product level activity. To facilitate the production, if I'm going to incur the cost, then it is called facility level activity. Clear? I will take the same example. Water bottle. Every unit, I need the sticker. Cost of sticker, unit level activity. Then, I am going to test checking. Every batch of product, I am going to verify the quality of the water. Then, inspection cost may come under the batch level activity. Then, I am going to do the advertisement. What are the bislery, water bottle, advertisement going? Then, it comes under product. For the product, I am incurring the cost. Therefore, product level activity. Clear? Facility level activity. 
what are all the infrastructure facility or canteen facility to facilitate to produce a product? What are all the cost of in the companies for facility level activity? Then why we need activity-based costing? Four different needs are there for ABC. One is production overheads are high. How to apportion the overheads is a question mark. Then ABC is a tool for you. Great diversity in product range. More than one products are there. We have to want how to attain the cost of the product is difficult. Then ABC will make any use. Product use different amount of overhead resources, different, different resources have been utilized. Then ABC is useful. And computation of overhead, consumption of overhead may not mainly based on quantum, then ABC can be used. But in case of service sector, we are having problem with ABC. Difficult to identify the cost of object in the sun. Difficult to identify the cost driver and the expense. So these are all difficulty with respect to service sector. Thereafter, important formulas only. So these are all the cost exam question, which is more important for your preparation. So all are happy with the cost exam question. So six onwards, I'm having members program. Pardon me for completing the session little early. Tomorrow, we'll extend an additional half an hour, half an hour, so that I can be the person to offset to you. All are happy with the session? Yes. Kindly refer the theory and come. Tomorrow, we can meet again. Okay. Tomorrow, 4 o'clock to what? 7.30, we can come. Okay. Thank you. In Sikos also, thank you for the given opportunity. Yes. Bye, all of you. <clears throat> thank you, Madis. Thank you. Hello. Yes. Oh. Yes. Sir. Good evening once again, sir. So, thank you so much for uh, for your time. Sorry, Kamal. Thank you so I'm much. Finishing little early. Tomorrow will offset. Uh, no worries, it's all right. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you.